What's crap? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas and this is BDG. Big dogs gotta eat. I'm sorry about the audio. I, you know, I bought this, this microphone fucking stinks. Like I bought it right before I left and I'm like, cool, I'm gonna have a USB thing to, to make this shit work and it ain't working. You guys fucking ripped me apart in the comment section a couple of days ago. You know, you think I'd earn your respect after like four years of good audio. Can't have one fucking hiccup here. One hiccup, you take me to the morgue. This is ridiculous. Don't make me do it to him. Today's video, 10 players. We are buying in Dynasty strictly because of the teammates of the current teams they are on's contract situation, all right? So we got some running backs, maybe their backfield mates contract comes to an end this summer and they're gonna be free agents. Therefore, the depth chart opens up. This video's a little bit, maybe some of them are good players. Maybe oh, Trey Sermon is a fucking no. god and he's gonna bounce bike this year. And maybe some players are, uh, you know, gonna have to prove to us that they belong on a roster. But never the more, we are going to open up the depth charts for you guys, let you know who we should be buying based on their teammates contracts running out this off season all right if 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 you enjoy the video make sure you hit the button that looks like this right underneath it if you're in the dynasty league if you got your rookie drafts coming up if any if you play fantasy football at all subscribe to the fucking channel all right just do it We're ripping off videos every day every fucking day when i'm biking in new york seven days a week maybe 10 days a week i don't know i might go loco this year i might explode in 2022 you don't know what's coming out of my fucking face hole but you do know what's coming next we're tucking it. All right? Tuck your shirt in. Look at this guy. There's a bar right, under, right underneath my hotel room. This guy's taking pictures of his shit. Just, no one cares about that picture you're taking, dude. Like, how come I be doing this shit? This stinks. I got Trey McTitty here. I got a camera. Meanwhile, Peco Park with, with the goddamn cotton candy sunset out here. Got me wanting to go to the circus. I got this fucking... He hasn't looked at me yet. Kind of looks like a mix of, uh, there's this one actor that's always angry. I don't know. I just assume all these guys are out here cheating on their wives. Oh, who's that down there? Your wife don't give a fuck. She's like, I'm glad he's gone for the weekend. Kids are like, that's eh, fine. I like the babysitter better anyways. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Underdog has a ridiculous line right now. Joe Burrow, one passing yard for the Super Bowl. One. Just one. I'm getting some intelligence into my ear hole. Do it. Yep. Do it. Do it. The CIA told me that you should bet the over. The over is a lock. We've got intelligence, security, Air Force One, Marine Corps, the, the Navy. Found a buried treasure and it tells Joe Burrow going to go over one, one passing yard. That's what they have on Underdog right now. I don't know why the fuck you wouldn't sign up for Underdog if you haven't already. It literally makes no sense. It's free money. So hit the link. In the description, Underdog Fantasy is going to take you straight to your uh, straight to the app store of whatever phone you have. doesn't matter if you're iOS or Google, whatever. It's going to take you straight there. When you deposit for the first time, you're going to use the promo code BDGE, B-D-G-E, and it's going to double whatever you put down. So go throw down $10. It's going to give you $20. It's going to get you sack nice and big. You're going to have a big old sack by the time this video is over, and you're going to put it on Joe Burrow over one passing yard and then play it with somebody else. Play it with something else. If you've already used one of the special lines, Debo, Jamar Chase, whatever, the Joe Burrow line will not populate. Only one special line per playoffs, all right? We can't bankrupt the fucking company, all right? We can't bankrupt them. We want them to continue to operate because then we can play fun best ball games, okay? Underdog Fantasy, Joe Burrow over, over one passing yard. What the fuck? Like, what the fuck? Okay, let's get into this list. 10 players that we are buying in Dynasty because of the contracts in which their teammates are no longer employed by the IRS. Trey Sermon of the 49ers, all right? I'm not here to argue whether or not Trey Sermon is better than Elijah Mitchell because he uh, he ain't. He is not better than Elijah Mitchell, okay? What I am here to argue is that he's a good buy because we never know what's going to happen in the 49ers backfield. And Raheem Mostert, Jermichael Hasty, Jeff Wilson, all free agents. They have not shown enough health that warrants them getting a contract extension this year from Kyle Shanahan from the Niners, okay? I don't know if any of them are going to be back, but Trey Sermon is a clear rider for the RB2, which tends to be a good spot to be in if you are a running back in the NFL. Trey Sermon, all of his backfield mates are free agents except for Elijah Mitchell. This is probably my favorite player on this list, and it is Eno Benjamin, okay? Eno Benjamin of the Arizona Cardinals. Now, we're looking at his backfield. Eno Benjamin was one of my favorite prospects coming out. He hasn't got the respect that he deserves. So I'm in very small glimpses last year, and he, I'm not a one-game one, one sample size, but we're about to do a one-play sample size. Eno Benjamin just absolutely ran this dude over. Beautiful touchdown run from Eno Benjamin. James Conner, Chase Edmonds, both 
on the final year of their deal last year. Okay. Maybe they resigned one of them. Maybe they resigned two of them. Doubt it. But if anything, you know, Benjamin's going to be the number two here. Okay. You know, Benjamin, my comp for him coming out was he was sort of like an Aaron Jones player where he's a little bit undersized, but great pass catcher in college can play successfully on all three downs. Good runner, elusive, has a lot, a lot going for him, right? 5'9", 207. So he's a little bit smaller, but the BMI is up there. 60, 70, whatever. He's, he's, he's obese as America would put him. All right. And we love obese running backs. Yeah. He's in that Aaron Jones mold, athletic, shifty, pass catcher, got good burst, got good agility, all that and above. He would dominate in the Arizona Cardinals offense if he got a chance to rumble. Give him the ball. Let Booby spin. So go grab Eno Benjamin for a fourth round pick ASAP. DJ Dallas, another guy that you might be able to pick off waivers, to be honest with you. But we look at the Seattle Seahawks situation. Alex Collins, Rashad Penny, who was not resigned on his fifth year deal. Both of them are free agents. That only leaves Chris Carson there. Chris Carson is a guy they can't really you know, playing your backfield around anymore, man. Chris Carson is a guy who's too many injuries. This is his final year of this deal. Doubt they let him uh, continue playing for Seattle anymore. DJ Dallas came into the NFL as kind of a hybrid player. He will, he was a hybrid player going into the University of Miami, fucking you, and uh, and he converted to a running back eventually, but he's got a three down skill set. And I think he has shown that he can handle a workload. I think he has shown glimpses of being a good running back. And I think he'll get more opportunity next year. So DJ Dallas is a guy that I'm intrigued by because I liked him coming out of college and now the opportunity may be there. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, Mr. Rashad Penny because they declined his fifth year option and that made him look a little silly. Now, Rashad Penny, or I should say, you know, or any of these contracts, you can go check out on spotrack.com. That will be linked down below, completely free to use, S-P-O-T-R-A-C.com, it's like sports contract. They tried to combine it and came out with an absolutely fucking dreadful name for it. But lo and behold, you can go check it out. You should also check out Mr. Josh Palmer of the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Josh Palmer is interesting. Not He's not unknown. Everyone knows who Josh Palmer is at this point. If you're in the Dynasty community, you know who Josh Palmer was because he was a third round pick last year in the NFL draft, which led to him being like a third round pick in most rookie startup or in most rookie dynasty drafts okay so you know who he is and his value is only going he showed good this year man he didn't like ball out and by no means that he put up any statistical significant numbers as a rookie but he showed enough that shows me that he's going to be a player in this league and he's going to be a part of this offense going forward because mike williams is a free agent he's probably going to command a nice deal elsewhere and jalen guyton who they should honestly resign because he's done nothing but kind of ball out and make big plays for them is also a free agent so are both of their tight ends on parham and jared cook so a lot of open opportunities there over the middle of the field. Josh Palmer is not really like Mike Williams in the fact that like he's a downfield playmaker getting fucking choke slammed by Undertaker every time he goes up for a goddamn pass. But he's a nice little possession receiver, you know. Chargers move the ball quickly. They like to hurry up. They like to go chuck it and chuck it and chuck it. Cheap chop boop bop quickly and get these rips off real quick. Keenan Allen, Josh Palmer, possession guys really like Josh Palmer. Third round pick last year, 22 years old. Go scoop him up because the Chargers ain't scooping up Mike Williams this offseason. Maybe they will actually, and this will look like a terrible take. But we're going to look at Tampa Bay. Now, I had Tampa Bay on this list of guys because I had Justin Watson. I had Tyler Johnson as very intriguing options because Chris Godwin was going to be a free agent. They'll probably franchise tag him. Antonio Brown, he just decided to shirtlessly walk off his career. So I respect the way that he went. And then uh, Gronk is a free agent, but Tom Brady left. So none of that fucking matters anymore. We're not buying Justin Watson or Tyler Johnson, unfortunately. But I will pivot this to a little bit of a Gronk buy window. This is going to be crazy because you ain't going to have to pay really anything for him. You'd assume with Brady retiring that Gronk would retire. Most guys retire for the reason that they're not like in love with the game anymore or they want to spend more time with their family. Neither of those cases is the case for Mr. Gronkowski. I know that to be the case because he doesn't have a family Two, he's already talking about how if he were to play with another player if he were to choose a quarterback to play with right now it would be joe burrow like you don't talk about hypothetical situations of wanting to play elsewhere unless you still love the game and still want to play elsewhere right like you don't throw out these hypotheticals like clearly he'd want to play he, or otherwise he would come out and say it immediately after tom brady retired he would come out and say like hey my head's not in the game my heart's not in the game anymore but no he comes out and says if i were to play with another quarterback it'd be joe burrow right now which tells me that he's probably going to end up in cincinnati next year okay cj ozoma is a free agent and we heard we saw the we saw the clip of Gronk talking about, I don't know if it was on ESPN or whatever it was, that he was supposed to get traded from New England to, I can't remember the team, maybe it was Buffalo or some shit. And he was like, if they trade, I told him if they trade me, I'm retiring. Like, that's it. That's the end of me. It's like, oh, no, I'm retired. 
tired. How can you train me? <laughs> and I stayed on the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he gets what he wants, all right? Gronk lives life on his own terms. You know what? Ignorance is bliss, but let Gronk live the way Gronk wants to live. And that's what he's going to do. He'll retire if he if he can't go to Cincinnati, if he can't play the way he, that he wants to play. He's not going to stay in Tampa, probably. And if he can't end up where he wants to go, which is Cincinnati, then he'll probably retire. But I see no reason why Cincinnati wouldn't put money into him, right? Jamar Chase, rookie contract. T. Higgins, rookie contract. Joe Burrow, rookie contract. Like, all these guys on rookie contracts. No reason if they think Gronk is going to be the thing that pushes him over the edge. One year, $8 million deal or some shit gets it done. So I kind of like Gronk as a sneaky, a sneaky, sneaky low buy as like a fourth round pick or some shit in tight end premium leagues. Amari Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers, man. So rookie wide receivers are int- or rookie wide receivers moving into their sophomore years are are interesting for a few reasons. They tend to be the best value pockets of trading in Dynasty, but only specific ones, okay? What happens is like each year, a lot of these early round wide receivers hit, a lot of them bust. You could have bought, you know, Michael Pittman low after year one. You could have bought like a like a Van Jefferson, I think even probably raised value after year one into year two. You could have got them for low after disappointing rookie seasons. But you also could have went and bought the Denzel Mimses and the Jalen Ragers and been wildly disappointed. And those guys were like hyped up as the best buy low candidates all fucking off season last year. We can go back and make a two hour long clip of people on YouTube talking about how they're the best buy low candidates in the world. Now, the problem with that is like you have a shitty rookie year, right? And more often than not, if you have a shitty rookie year, it probably means that you're just not that good of an NFL player. So to look at those guys, Denzel Mims and Jalen Rager and be like, okay, they were like back into the first round picks and rookie drafts, right? You still have to put pretty heavy capital into those guys in order to trade for them. After Jalen Rager's rookie year, you, you still have to give up maybe like the 203 or the 205 or something to get him, which is a pretty hefty price. There's a lot of good players still left in rookie drafts at that point, especially in like super flex tight end premium type leagues. And that's not good, okay? So what you want to do is have guys that fit that criteria where they struggled their rookie year, but to buy them going into their sophomore year, they're very cheap to get. Amari Rogers being one of them because he was already like a back end third, early fourth round rookie pick. He was picked in like the fifth round of the NFL draft or some shit. A lot of people liked him. The way I describe Amari Rogers is he's like he's like a he's like a Walmart Debo Samuel if everything in Walmart was on sale and you had a fucking coupon. All right, so that's the type of player do you. Uh, to, fucking Amari Rodgers is. He's like also not really athletic. I know I'm not pitching him well here, but I will in a second. Yeah, so he's like a behind. You get the ball in his hands. He makes moves. He makes guys miss, etc. Not really that good of a player, to be honest with you. But the Green Bay wide receivers, they literally have nobody on contract next season. Devontae Adams, MVS, Alan Lazard, Equinemius St. Brown, someone named Jawan Winfrey, I think it was. Malik Te- None of these guys are on contract. Randall Cobb is the only one on contract, and we've already had reports come out that they're probably not retaining him next year. They'll save $7 million by cutting him. The big question mark here is what happens with Aaron Rodgers, okay? Do you want Amari... Like, you know how bad Amari Rodgers has to be in order for him not to get playtime next year? With literally... Every single one of these players is gone. Every single one. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not like poking holes in a fake argument. They're all gone. Every one of them. All right, so Amari Rogers got to suck some fat old titties in order to not get play time next year. You just got to hope it's with Aaron Rodgers and not Jordan Love. But obviously, if Aaron Rodgers is back, Devontae Adams is probably back for throw the tag, throw the tag on that bitch. All right, so regardless, Amari Rodgers has a very open lane in order to get a lot of play time and possibly with Aaron Rodgers. So he's someone I would buy because you don't have to pay a lot to get him. Let's move to tight ends. Okay. So here, here are the big names at, at free agency at the tight end position going into this offseason. We have Zach Ertz, Mike Isicki, CJ Zoma, Jimmy Graham, Eric Ebron, OJ Howard, Evan Ingram, David Njoku, Gerald Everett, Jared Cook. Uh, most of those guys don't, don't fucking matter whatsoever. Here's a team where their main guy is not a free agent. And that's Dan Arnold, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Very intrigued by Dan Arnold. Okay. 26 years old, hyper fucking athletic. And we saw him do really, really well with Trevor Lawrence really quickly he came in like halfway through the season four games into the season whatever the case may be i forget what it is i don't know tony throw a fucking number some shit on the screen for me <laughs> one time for me baby and then all was really good okay and then you look at the makeup of the jaguars dj chark gone jamal agnew serious season ending injury i don't know what his status is going to be for next year Tavon Austin, gone. Lacan Treadwell, free agent. James O'Shaughnessy, also a free agent. You know, if James O'Shaughnessy was someone that worried you, you probably shouldn't be buying that player in the first place. But it's good to know that they're all fucking gone. Everybody's gone. Line them up. 
truck and knock them down. Everybody's gone from Jacksonville, okay? LaVisca's still there. Marvin Jones, uh, I want to say they put him on a two-year deal, but regardless, a lot of the, the playmakers are gone. You know, I like Dan Arnold for Dan Arnold. Like, we saw, no matter who it was at tight end, Trevor Lawrence was targeting them six, seven, eight times per game. It was a really high number. Dan Arnold's probably in it for the long haul with Trevor Lawrence, 26. We've seen guys break out much later than 26. Usually they're breaking out at 26, 27, 28, 30, whatever. And uh, and he's very athletic, and I just really like the upside of Dan Arnold. So he is someone that I'm definitely targeting this year in Dynasty offseason trade saison. Mike Kosicki, free agent we talked about in yesterday's video. Hunter Long, third round pick last year. Athletic guy, best comparable to Jason Witten. Missed all of his rookie year with the knee injury. Uh, came back for the last few games, but we've heard nothing about Mike Kosicki re-signing, getting, uh, that, getting the bag or nothing like that. So Hunter Long could step into the starting role there immediately with Will Fuller out of there as well. So Hunter Long, someone to keep on the radar. Harrison Bryant, someone to keep on the radar with David and Joku gone. Austin Hooper's still there, but like all fucking Austin Hooper does is catch the ball and fall down. He is he is like the tight end version of, of Buck Allen. Okay. We used to call him Suck Allen. That's the way I look at a guy like Austin Hooper. That dude like literally just falls onto the fucking white paint. Like his, you know how many times his wife has to do laundry? Every, uh, I guess everyone has to do laundry after every fucking game. Fuck you guys. You know what I mean? Falls on the white paint every goddamn time. It's just, it's sickening, man. And I would love to see Harrison Bryant run amok there. The last guy that I really, really think you should be targeting at the tight end position is Trey McKitty. And we brought up the Chargers. Mike Williams gone. Jared Cook gone. Donald Parham gone. Trey McKitty, also a third round pick last year. Uh, just turned 23 years old. 6'4", 240. I think he will become a part of this offense as these other parts of the offense disperse and have to leave Los Angeles. So uh, Trey McKinney is another tight end I have my eye on, but Dan Arnold is definitely the prized possession I would be targeting in Dynasty this offseason. Uh, that's all I got for y'all today, okay? So make sure you hit up Underdog. The link to Underdog, first link in the description. Let me know who you'll be trading for this offseason. Go check out Spotrack. Do some research on the contracts. Come back. Let me know who's grabbing the bag. Let me know who doesn't have the bag this offseason so that we can go secure the bag in the offseason trade situation. Sorry, I can't stop looking out. The fucking sky in San Diego, it just looks like cotton candy. Man. I love you. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We out.